Welcome to everything new in the Oxygen Not Included Ranching Mark II update. There's so many new critters, we're going to check them all out, how you get them, what you do with them. New pipes, new sensors, new machines, so much stuff. So sit back, grab your cup of tea, we're going to dive into everything new in Mark II in 20 minutes. Ish. Hello guys and girls and welcome back to the next episode of Oxygen Not Included with me Biffa and don't believe what you see on the screen we are now looking at the preview of the ranching upgrade mark 2 not mark 1 so there is one week and six days until this releases onto the steam branch that everybody gets automatically if you wish to download this preview version you can go to your game properties on steam and look at the tab on the right hand side that says betas or something drop down box and there's ranching mark 2 and you can check out the new update so if you load up a save game from previous versions in the preview you can't roll it back so please be aware of that now there is something on the screen here that you have probably seen ever since this game well for a long time since this game was was out they've had this loading screen here and it's this little creature in here who's not been in the game and there he is we've got eggs now but this little guy called a paku i believe and he's going backwards and forwards in the water never been in the game well we have lots of new critters and stuff to show you so let me dive into something that's new on this screen here if we start a new game go to custom game there's now some more options in the immune system we used to have impervious uh, we used to have sorry strong we've now got impervious unflappable so good for testing stress responses nope we'll turn those off sandbox mode yes we are gonna have that and we're gonna start a sandbox game and i will show you in game what that does right so here we are in a new game a normal start like you've probably seen a hundred times before and we have a little option up here the sandbox option so what i am thinking of doing is putting together a separate video that will go over the sandbox option because there's so much in it it's actually going to be replacing this which is the debug menu that we've had access to by moving files around and doing different things and this was really created for the developers to use it also unlocks the whole map so you can see what's going on as well but they've made it nice and easy for us if we turn that off by this sandbox menu where we can brush we can sprinkle we can flood yeah we can grab samples of things we have a heat gun so we can change the temperature we can spawn things in and we can clear the floor and destroy stuff so this is their way of making those tools accessible to everyone at the moment in the sandbox there isn't a way to open up the whole map you still need to use the debug tools for that and we're just going to use this to have a quick look around and see if we can find in their natural habitat some of the new creatures that are in the world and straight away we have found one a draco now watch this guy as he's walking around this guy is also tameable and farmable and look he crawls sideways on blocks and he is actually a way of getting plastic we'll come to that with one of the new machines a bit later on but we can shear him for plastic and also there's a new interesting information down here egg chances and this is the same for i don't think this guys have eggs there we go but some of the other critters do we'll come to that you can get a normal draco egg or we can get a plastic draco egg ah so there's different things there let's find some fish out of water there's dracos all over the place they eat pinch of pepper nuts i believe as well if we go down here yeah and they produce dirt hooray for those of you watching my <laughs> my my playthrough that i've been doing in the rancher one upgrade yeah dirt has become a little bit of a problem now we have a way to get more dirt okay here's some slicksters we've seen those before but look at the different egg chances slickster lava egg molten slickster lava egg and long hair slickster lava egg aha uh -huh. So stuff is going on with these critters. Lots of chances of getting new things. Let's find some more. Oh, look. Look. They're crawling around on the ceiling. Do you think it's going to be hard to look after these guys and keep them trapped? I'm sort of getting that impression. <laughs> Here we go. In the water. A Paku. Finally. Let's see what they do. So Paku egg. Tropical Paku egg. And a gulp fish egg so they eat algae produce polluted dirt ah excellent well if we come out of this mode let's go back to the home menu 
and close this. And now we have the dictionary that, of course, has been added. Uh, or the database, I should say. And under critters, we can see all the different types of critters we can get. So here's the basic ones now. Draco, Hatch, Morb, Puffed, Shine Bug, and Slickster. And already you can see some of these are looking a bit different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little zoo. And we're going to check out all the different types of creatures they are. Let's have a look at all the new creatures. I've just got the game paused at the moment. We'll have a look at them moving around in a second. But we want to be able to see them easily. So we have a Puff Prince... We have the little pufflet and the puff prince egg. Obviously, a lot of this art is temporary, which we'll see in a moment. We have the squeaky pufflet, uh, squeaky puffed, that uh, should be, pufflet and the squeaky pufflet egg. Uh, we have a puffed, a pufflet, so the, the small ones are called lit at the end, and a pufflet egg, squeak, uh, the normal one. Uh, we have a dense puffed, the baby and the egg. There's a change to the slicksters. We have normal slicksters. Slickster for lava and Slickster lava egg. So that's the baby version of that. Um, we have the long haired Slickster with the egg and then the long haired Slickster. So that's the baby version there, the lava version. And then these three go together the molten Slickster, the molten Slickster egg, and the molten Slickster lava. So three separate types of Slickster one, two, and three. And one, two, three, four version of Pufflets, uh, Puffs. Uh, we have the Draco. So we have the normal Draco with the Draco egg. Obviously temporary art. We have the plastic Draco, which is the one we want. Um, with the plastic Draco egg. We have just the single morb on its own. Can't do anything with him. No babies. <laughs> Poor guy. Then we have the hatches. Four different versions of hatches. We have... And the babies, by the way, are in the background. They're just little white versions of them. Normal hatch. Stone hatch. Smooth Hatch and Sage Hatch. So four versions of those. And then we have the Nymph or the Shine Bug. So we have the Nager Shine Nymph and the baby with their egg. We have the Placid Shine Bug with the baby and the egg. And these, the art, all looks the same. I think the eggs have been done. Yeah, so we have, what was it? The Nager, the Placid, the Shine one, so the normal one. The Crystal Shine, the Warm Shine, the Vital Shine, and the Royal Shine. Ah, so what effects are they going to give us? And then we have three different types of fish. The Gulp Fish, the Paku, and the Tropical Paku. Ah, so all sorts of stuff going on there. Let's unpause the game, and we can see these guys moving around. They're two, these are two blocks wide, by the way. So the first, there we go. The first creature to be two blocks wide. Some of these may die, because they're probably not in the water that they like, but <laughs> or the air that they like. But yeah, it's going to be interesting finding out what all of these can do for you. So bear in mind, of course, that things may change as the uh, preview progresses. But just looking at the hatches here, uh, we have the normal hatch that comes from a hatch and egg. He will eat these items. So it's now limited as to what they will eat. Uh, depending on the sort of hatch you've got. So they will eat those, produce coal. The stone hatch will eat... So if you look here, you've got sedimentary rock is the only rock that's there. He will eat igneous rock, obsidian. He will eat copper ore and all sorts of stuff. He will produce coal. We have the smooth hatch that I think looks like an alien from the film Aliens. <laughs> I think he's fantastic. Um, they will eat all the different types of ore and give you copper... So that's not the base one, that's the refined copper. And then the uh, the sage hatch will eat dirt, slime, algae, all of those, and he will give you coal. So what about all the new puffs that we've got? Well, let's take a look. The puff prints. Look at his hair. Doesn't he look cool? Uh, he has a diet of polluted oxygen and will give you slime. So that's pretty much the same. The squeaky puffed. Uh, would have a diet of chlorine and give you bleach stone. So that is no longer something that is limited on your map. <laughs> you can see him there. Uh, the normal puffed takes in polluted oxygen and gives you slime. I reckon this one's going to change. He's going to give you something else. Watch this space. The dense puff will take in oxygen and give you oxalites. Ah, so that is interesting. Be interesting to see some conversion recipes we can do with that. So what about the Slicksters? We have the normal Slickster here. As always, he takes in carbon dioxide, gives off crude oil. The long-haired Slickster, there we go. He takes in oxygen, doesn't say what he produces yet, so we'll have to watch out for that. And the molten one takes in carbon dioxide and produces petroleum. 
So that is pretty good. So whereas this one gave you crude oil and you would need to convert it, this one takes carbon dioxide, turns it straight to petroleum. So if you can find some of these, I think you're going to be on to a winner. It'll be interesting to see what the long-haired slickster will give us. And then looking at the shine bugs that we've got down here, the Nega shine bug has a diet of abyssalite. The Placid Shine Bug has a diet of Phosphorus and Phosphite. Ah, oh, my poor dupes. <laughs> my shine, uh, the Shine Nymph, uh, Phosphorite as well. And the Crystal Shine Nymph, Phosphorite. And the Warm Shine Bug, Phosphorite. And the Vital Shine Bug, Phosphorite. And the Royal One, I've skipped ahead of it here, Phosphorite as well. But what other effects do they give us? We're just taking a look at the decor overlay. If we just pause the game and hover right over these. So this one gives a decor of plus 150. So that's 110 from the Nymph, uh, the plastic. Oh, actually, no, let's look at the bottom one there. So 110 from the two Shine Nymphs. Uh, this one here... 50 from each or oh, 50 from the placid 30 from the nymph so that's interesting they give plus 15 light in the same that gives 60 from each this one gives 60 from each that one gives 50 from each that gives 50 from each and that gives 50 from each so if we can get hold of these ones here 110 that is pretty good isn't it oh no hang on no these give 60 from each that's a hunt oh that gives 60 in total 60 in total 50 that's 100 in total yes <laughs> bad at maths but you get the idea so yeah that's 100 that's 100 that's 100 that's 120 with the two of them so 60 each 50 and 30 yeah so that is pretty good if you can get some of these this one here there's 60 each that is the Crystal Shine Nymph. That's going to give you a good boost to your decor. Okay, and before they all die, because these some of these guys are not in the right uh, water, the Gulpfish, which is... That's the Paku. That's the Paku. That's the Tropical Paku. Oh, my Gulpfish have died. Uh, maybe let's just add a couple of those back in. <laughs> Poor guys. So we can have a look at them. There we go. Gulpfish. Oh, I just saw the meat. <laughs> There's the Gulpfish. So, they have a diet of algae and produce polluted dirt. Uh, the Paku, that's the tropical one. So, the Paku here has a diet of algae and produces polluted dirt. And the same for the tropical Paku as well. But, obviously, they have different needs. So, this guy here um, doesn't actually say what he needs to live in. Might be an option to have some fish tanks. If you have to look there, we get plus 10 decor from a Paku. These ones here, plus 25 for a tropical Paku. Um, and these ones, let's have a look over here. The gulp fish, uh, plus 10 each. So, I mean, maybe you could have a fish tank of some of those, but not a huge decor bonus. And it looks like they need to live in polluted water, these ones. And these other ones are happy swimming around in normal water. So, fish tanks, anybody? Well, let's have a look at some of the new machines that have been added. Temporary art, as always. So, we have the fish trap and the fish release and the fish feeder. So, it's like the other items that you have for picking up for dropping off and for feeding your animals. At the moment, uh, you're unable to... Oh, there we go. Look, we can add what we're going to feed onto here. So that's good. So if we actually put some fish into here, let's spawn... Yep, some goldfish. There we go. Pop those into there. Using polluting water, emitting water. Oh, just noticed that. Oh, that is fantastic. That is really good. Ah, well, they're not going to be happy in there anyway. But we can feed them with whatever we choose. At the moment, it's algae for all of our guys. Uh, this fish release here, obviously, we can put them back into the water. Let's do a fish catcher, a fish trap. So I think that's going to float on top of the water. Let's keep an eye on that and see what happens when the... There we go. He's been caught. And then they can be released by a dupe, as always, with the fish release. Excellent. I'm just diving into my test world to show you some more stuff. But a new feature, if you have an old save game that you want to change to the sandbox version, because you see it's not up in the corner here, you go to the options, scroll all the way down to the bottom, unlock sandbox mode. And when you enable sandbox mode, it will be marked on this save. So you can save a backup first or just enable sandbox mode. 
mode. Well, it's my test world, so I will enable sandbox mode. There we go, and now I have the options down here. So first of all, we have some new pipes, or a new pipe, and some new sensors. This is called the Radiant Liquid Pipe. And the, if you look at the database entry, actually, that's probably the easiest way to see it. It carries liquid, encourages significant change in temperature. So if you're taking something hot through it and it goes in a cold area, it's going to exchange temperature, or obviously vice versa, even more better than normal. That was a terrible English sentence, but you get the idea. So that's going to be very interesting to use in builds. But these new sensors... Uh, I think are absolutely fantastic. A liquid pipe thermo sensor, a germ sensor, and an element sensor. So these are to be used with automating, turning things on and off. Let's look at the thermo sensor. It has the temperature. You've seen this sort of threshold set up before. You can set the temperature and whether it activates above or below. And then that will send an automation signal with the automation wire to something that you have set up. Perhaps it is a mini liquid pump there we go and it can stop that if the temperature reaches a certain level the same with the germs you can detect how many germs are in the water and activate above or below and the pipe element sensor so this will turn things on and off depending on what elements are going through let's just read up on that one becomes active when configured uh, can use to detect the presence of a specific liquid in a pipe and it has bad decor. I think they all have bad decor. But that's pretty good. So you would just run that. Let's grab some pipes. Any old pipe. You just run that. There we go. Have your pipes going through. And as it passes through that point, you can then set up your automation wire to turn items on or off. Now, to go along with that, to be able to do those, we have a new job. If we scroll down here to the groundskeeper section, which always seems a little bit empty, we now have the plumber. So he has a plus two to strength and the trait of plumbing. He has mastery of groundskeeping, capable of tidying. But he can also empty pipes without leaking water everywhere, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, normally, if you replace a load of pipes, the water and stuff goes all over the place. So he can now do that. Now, what is interesting is I don't know how you would, other than building doors and blocking things in, how would you make a dupe who is a plumber be the only one to destroy things? I suppose you'd have to set... Uh, their priorities to do that or maybe he automatically uh, comes along and will take pipes away that have water in do you know what we could just do a little test couldn't we okay let's do a little test here we have a mini liquid pump pumping it over into here all the water and we'll see what happens i've got this liquid pipe element sensor set to water so that should become active and turn off there when the water gets there so let's just have a look so the water is going to hit that and that should stop the pump. Oh, I see. It flashes on and off depending if water's going through. Oh, okay. Interesting. Let's speed that up a bit. Oh, very good. So I'm wondering whether then, if you set that for a different type of liquid, you could set up systems of rerouting stuff. Oh, suddenly lots of ideas come into mind. But yeah, that's the new liquid stuff and the new plumber job. But there's more. So along with the new liquid pipes, we also have new radiant gas pipes. Do the same thing, encouraging thermal transfer. Uh, we also have a gas pipe element sensor, so we can pick our elements. The gas pipe germ sensor, the gas pipe thermo sensor for the temperature. And then also under the automation tab, we have this one here, the gaseous element sensor. So that's not connected to a pipe or anything like that it uses power uh, 25 watts so not too bad and that will detect a different type of gas there's a few listed here not many listed in there we may get some more added or oh, that might be all of the different gaseous elements um, and then it will obviously run your automation system and turn it on or off depending on how you want it set up automatic airlocks anybody i think that could be quite good for that and i don't think it's too expensive to make either let's have a look 
Uh, no, it just takes refined metal. So, yeah, very cool. And there's still more stuff that's going to help us deal with the lovely new critters that we have. So, here we go. A new machine, the shearing station, which needs to be inside a stable, which has one of these inside. So, there we go. The grooming station. Not very expensive, I believe. There we go. Yep, so just made with normal items. And this shears the Draco. And remember, he can provide plastic for us. I don't believe it needs power or anything and not at the moment that may change as always and we've got some temporary art on there to deal with that uh, i'm loving using the new sandbox mode so much quicker to do stuff i have to tell you it's absolutely brilliant especially with the search option so let's grab ourselves a draco there we go plastic draco let's pop a couple of three in there there we go so they've got the plastic on their back happy to be removed let's control f2 add in otto he is going to have the job of rancher which is down the bottom here somewhere if i can find it seasoned rancher uh, otto there we go excellent so hopefully he's gonna yep there we go let's speed this up a bit <laughs> they're gonna crawl all over the place and they're also going to go through the door by the look of it well they shouldn't do that <laughs> i'll tell you what we're going to do to stop that happening we're going to put a couple of blocks there Yep, yeah, please don't do that. Oh, there we go. He's going to get groomed, first of all. Oh, and he's been sheared. So it's using the same animation as we've got there. And it's dropped. There we go. It's going to do this one. So it's using the grooming animation. I'm assuming these are going to spin and remove the... Yeah, look. Remove the spines from his back. And what are we left with down here? We are left with 300 kilograms of plastic. So 150 kilograms of plastic per Draco. That is pretty flipping good, if you ask me. <laughs> Where's the other one disappeared to? There he is. Look, he's crawling up the side. He's gone. <laughs> Excellent. So if you can catch some of these, that is another cool way of getting plastic in your game. Oh, one more new automation item that's been added is the memory toggle. Wow, there we go. That sounds interesting. Becomes active when the logic port is active. Standby when the reset port is active. I can foresee people making computers soon in this game. Yep, yep, getting very good. And also, a lot of the new... Uh, critters that you can find they're not all found in the world a lot of them you have to breed them together and also as we saw right at the beginning of the video i think i mentioned the percentage chance of some of them dropping a certain type of egg so that is how you would get some of these cool new critters so how about that for a cacophony of critters in the new ranching mark 2 upgrade if you enjoyed this video leave a like hit the big b with a t-stone to subscribe for more update videos on all sorts of different indie games and check out something you see on the screen as well i'm sure you will enjoy it and i will see you guys very soon take care bye bye